This video was brought to you by my patrons, thank you so much for your support. Platformer is a game genre that focuses on testing the player's ability to move on uneven terrains and floating platforms. It's a common type of game to start with game development, it's simple to implement, yet you can explore the mechanisms to build complex designs. A platformer game is so simple that I think we can sum up the basic mechanisms into 5 steps. In a 2D platformer, it's essential that the player can move in both axes, but they only have true control over the horizontal one. To achieve that, we can use the move and slide with snap, then we add some gravity and whenever the player presses the left and right action, we change the horizontal movement direction. To perform a jump, we can apply an impulse force upwards, not forgetting to disable the snap vector. If you want to get more details on player character movement, I will put a link in the description to a written tutorial that I made about moving on slopes and jumping with snap. Every game needs a goal. In platformers, the ultimate goal is to parkour through the whole level and progress to its end. But we need to give players some incentives in order to hook them into this goal. A simple yet effective way to achieve that is to add what we call breadcrumbs, a trail of positive incentives that can lure the players to a given path. For instance, coins can be good breadcrumbs, so let's use them to get the players through the level. In order to allow the players to grab the coins, the player's character has a pickup area, a simple area to d that the coin can detect. Then the coins have another area to d that masks the player's pickup area's layer. Whenever they detect the player's pickup area, they vanish and emit a signal notifying that they were picked. To make this an actual goal, we need an object that tracks the progress and notifies it. For that, I created this object that subscribes to the coin's picket signal and iterates a variable. When the current variable matches the goal amount, it emits a signal notifying that the goal is completed. Of course, this wouldn't be a platform game without platforms, right? So, for static platforms, the design is quite simple. They are basically static bodies with a collision shape and some graphics. For instance, I'm using a Polygon 2D in my case. But we can add some moving platforms as well. I'm going to use a method that I call path follow platforms. They are basically kinematic bodies synced to a path follow, which has its unit offset animated using an animation player. Then, to be able to design the movement, I use a path 2D. With this approach, I can make all sorts of movement patterns. I will add a link in the description for a tutorial that I made about the path follow platforms if you want to add some to your game as well. Well, the next step is to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. <laughs> Just kidding, but take the chance to do so, it will help this channel to grow and reach more people. We have positive incentives for our players to complete our goal of moving through the level. But a game is also made out of punishment. Now, since we are going to test the player's mastery with the game's physics, we need to punish them when they miscalculate a jump, for instance. For that, we can add what we call dangers. Dangers are objects that hurt or kill the players, but they don't have any intentional behavior, like an artificial intelligence that chases the player, for instance. A good example of dangers are spikes in lava. They are part of the level environment and the player just have to avoid them. To achieve that punishing behavior, we can create a killing error 2D. An error 2D that will use another physics layer, different from the one that we are using for the goals, for instance for the coins, and when the player detects this layer, when the player detects this killing error, it will die. We can then add this killing error to d with a collision shaped polygon, for instance, to design the spikes and the lava. Whenever the player dies, the lava will restart. Nothing of this would make sense if the players couldn't progress towards more challenging levels, so we need a way to keep challenging players. For that, we can add some level progress mechanisms, for instance, when the player accomplishes the level's goal, a portal to a next level can open and once the players enter into the portal, they will be teleported to the next level. We can export a string variable to allow us to select the next level scene path. Then, we can use the getTree.changeScene method to teleport the player to the next level. From here, there is nothing too specific to platformers. You can add some interface elements, a pause menu if you want, some screens as well, like a main menu and an end screen, and start to polish the game with animations, visual effects, sound effects, and as such. Guys, as you know, all my content is sponsored by my beloved patrons. I'm thinking about making a complete series here on YouTube about how to make a platformer game once I hit $200 monthly support on Patreon.
The series will cover way more than just the basics. Topics like interface, saving and loading player's progress, screen flow, local multiplayer support and more. We are currently at $144 at the moment, so what about helping with $5 so we can achieve this goal real quick? Well, that's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing and until the next time.